Okay, welcome. This is a video for my CCNA Routing and Switching Review Guide text. It focuses on exams 100-101, 200-101, and 200-120. The, it's a Cybex uh, branded textbook focusing on our CCNT uh, study guide. Chapter 1 is about our internetworking capabilities. The main focus of this chapter, or this chapter, is uh, understanding the basic operation of an IP data network, recognizing the purpose, function of different devices, routers, switches, bridges, and hubs. Look at specific components that are going to allow a network to run. Identify common application and their impact on our network, and talk about basic operations of our protocol stack in the OSI and TCP/IP models. Okay, so very basic network consists of at least two nodes and some type of interconnection. Here we have a hub. Again, a hub is a multi-port repeater. It's antiquated. It's old. Anything that it gets on one port, it will send out every other port, even if it's not destined for everyone. Here's an example. If we add in a switch, Bob, who may want to just communicate with John, because it's a hub, it will be sent to everyone, including Sally, who may not even get it. And we're not even talking about broadcast right now. It's just a hub, when it gets it on one port, sends it to everyone. A switch allows us to separate this thing called a collision domain. And a collision domain is basically just where collisions can occur. A hub, since it clones and uh, repeats every signal on every port, it's one giant collision domain. With a switch, it's a smarter hub, essentially. Every individual port on a switch becomes a collision domain, meaning you're less likely to have collisions on switches. So if we throw a router in the mix, even if we're sending a broadcast, it won't matter. A broadcast will not happen at a layer 3 uh, or won't uh, separate a layer 3 network. So, because our router is a layer 3 device, it will not forward our broadcasts. Even though John may tell everyone that he loves them or that he loves shouting, it will be broadcast to everyone in its internal network, not its broadcast. So essentially, we have one broadcast here, we have a second broadcast here, and we have one collision domain, two collision domains, three collision, four, five, six collisions. So we have two broadcast domains and six collision domains. Our other internet ranking devices could uh, include things like Bridges, again, they're antiquated. Realistically, bridges and hubs are not found anymore. They're not in today's modern network. In a switched environment, we are connecting an inner network. But notice all of these switches may join a giant loop. So if a broadcast is sent out that way, it'll be sent to that router. That router will broadcast everyone. And then every device it gets will then broadcast. And then we'll just end up with a broadcast storm because the devices will forward it out all ports except the one that it received it on, and it'll just keep looping. So, let's talk about our OSI layer. It consists of seven layers, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. And at each layer, they do specific tasks. For example, at the application, this provides a user interface. At the presentation, we're looking at presenting data as well as, well as handling processes such as encryption. 
session might keep different applications data separate. At the transport, we're looking at reliable delivery, and we're also looking at error correction. At the network layer, we're talking the uh, logical addressing and uh, path determination. At the data link, we are looking at turning bytes into frames, looking at media access, as well as error detection, not error correction, but just error detection. And then lastly, physical, that's taking the frames, putting them to bits, and then actually putting the uh, voltage or wireless signal on the wire to be sent. ROSI layer model is extremely important because, again, there's a lot of detail there. If we're looking at what uh, we specifically do at each one, here's a nice little quick one. Application, we're looking at our interaction with applications. Presentation is encryption, compression, translation. Session is more dialogue control. Transport end-to-end -end connections. And that also deals with termination of connections. At the network, we're talking about routing and path determination. At data link, we're talking about framing and path forwarding. And physical is the actual signal. So how do we establish a connection-oriented session? Meaning, we're going to be using a connection-oriented protocol, TCP. And how do we make sure that we have a established connection? And we do that through a three-way handshake. So a sender might send an async packet. The receiver will res uh, respond with a sync ACK. The sender will then send an ACK. That allows for a connection establishment. That way, once the uh, connection is established, you can send data securely. And then a similar process to um, terminate this connection. So what does this mean by connection oriented? It means guaranteed delivery, meaning we have to have some way of doing flow control and error correction. Here, we can actually start sending mass amounts of bits, and uh, the receiver, if it is getting full, will be able to send a stop bit and a go bit. That way we know when we can start sending more data. Now, what about windowing? Like, how many bits can we send if it's connection-oriented? Because, again, that's guaranteed delivery. Well, how do we know if uh, they're receiving them? And we do this by a windowing size. Let's assume we have a window size of 1. That means we'll send one packet, then we'll wait for an acknowledgement for one packet. So our second packet, we'll wait for a second acknowledgement, but we'll send one packet at a time. What about if we do a window size of three? That means we'll send three packets, but we'll get back one acknowledgement. Meaning every three packets will get one acknowledgement. If a error occurs in one of those uh, packets being sent, you'll have to resend all three packets. So there are some issues there. Transport layer reliable delivery. Again, with this, we can actually do a little bit better error correction. You'll notice that we may receive an acknowledgement for all three, but let's say we re lose a, or we lose connection for a five. Our acknowledgement could actually be we uh, received four and six, resend five, and then it will resend five, and then an acknowledgement. Routing tables and how they're used is essentially they learn what's directly connected and then they also learn via routing protocols how to send and forward traffic. For example, if we're dealing with the network on the left, this guy will call it A, and we may want to send to the 3 network. Well, we don't know how to get to the 3 network. But our routing table does know 
if anything for the three network pops up, send it out S0 right there. Anything for the three network, send out serial zero, and we have a hop count of one. So a router and an inner network. Our router is going to act as a default gateway. So if our LAN is on this side, this interface right here is part of our LAN. That will be our default gateway. If we don't know where to send it, we're going to send it to our default gateway. That way, it knows how to do a decision making based off of our packets. This also prevents broadcasts from going out. No broadcasts will be sent because it's a layer three device. Data link is broken up into two sub layers, our logical link controller and our media access or MAC. If we're looking at certain protocols like 802.3 ethernet or 802.11, they're gonna have a specific component whether part of the MAC or part of the LLC because again, each one does specific tasks. Our media access control deals with things such as allowing access to our media. Our logical link controller deals more with our framing. So let's put our switch in the internet network. How does that work? Very similar to a routing table, except this will be a MAC address table. And it will actually record the MAC addresses that way it knows what interface to send out the appropriate frame so that it goes to the right person. Unless it's a broadcast, then it goes to everyone. Remember that a hub clones the signal to everyone. So one of the big things here is read through the end of the chapter questions. You want to go through all of the written labs. And I'm going to be creating the lab, lab documents so that we can go through some of the labs as well. This material for our CSENT, the best way to do this, watch the video, do the lab. You have to have time on the router and switches to do your configuration. Thank you.